I live in New York, and so I write about the art market. I've been following this uh, fascinating and somewhat disturbing case involving these fake abstract expressionist paintings that have surfaced on the market. And, you know, the art world is very, it's a bizarre place. Still, I think the whole thing is pretty much generated by handshakes or the gentleman's agreement uh, without contracts involving lots of money. But that whole dynamic of when, from the primary market, from you know the painting that sells for ten thousand dollars the first time around, to the so-called secondary market, when if it has some juice to it and interest, someone else, it would be put either either in an auction or come back to the gallery and would sell again, and then you just get this long line of transactions. There's maybe 20 or 30 or 40 artists in the post-war contemporary world that consistently appear in these evening auctions. And every few years, another artist will sort of jump into that realm, typically at a smaller auction house. I mean, they're not doing it themselves. It's the collectors, it's the dealers, it's the art advisors. <laughs> investors, speculators that create a buzz about a certain artist. And I don't really know particularly why. And these things, of course, can go back. I mean, it's just like a stock. For a while, it got so bad in terms of not only auction houses pouncing on art or collectors trying to flip paintings that galleries try to, and I think it ineffectively, try to um, corral collectors, buyers, from reselling the work. And when they bought a work, supposedly would, you know, maybe sign or part of the invoice saying, if I ever decide to, I want to get rid of this thing. And I'll come back to you first, and you get the right of first refusal, which, you know, you can't really impose that on someone. Once you buy something, you do whatever you want with it. But there's no question that there are some markets that have some sort of manipulation in or my understanding that there's some sort of manipulation involved because of the amount of money and invested in artists from very important players in the art market. In traditional auctions, there's a buyer and there's a seller. And then if the prospective buyer decides that the price is too high, they won't buy the work, and it fails to sell at auction. But now the auction houses, in order to entice sellers to come into the market with valuable work, and therefore are afraid that the work might not sell, are offered basically a financial guarantee. So the seller knows before going into the auction that the work, no matter what happens, they will get a certain amount of money back. And these are called guarantees. And it used to be the auction houses putting the money in the risk. And there's a little symbol in the catalog uh, that you can, if you have a magnifying glass, you can tell that certain works are backed up by these other guarantees. So the auction world is no longer a level playing field. It's not what it was originally conceived as. So the art business has become a it's like a, not a stock market, but it's kind of like, let's wheel and deal. You know, we want this Rothko, what can we entice the seller? Oh, I only write about auctions that I am standing in the room looking around. Because it's, it's like, to me, it's a bit like being a sports writer, or you, you have to be at the game to really see what's happening to get the flavor of it. And so much of the business now is conducted at the auction on the phone in terms of collectors. And you cannot tell on the telephone what the hell is going on in the room. It's like a spectator sport. I mean, most of the people sitting there don't do anything. And there are a few that do. And it becomes less and less interesting, actually, 
as an event because so much of the action is on the telephone or much of the action in the room is, is an advisor or a dealer <clears throat> trying to be discreet or they're in a skybox or they're telegraphing their bids to someone else in the room. It's a very, you know, it's, it's, it used to be more interesting, but now it's sort of um, harder to identify really who's buying what. The auction houses, Christie's and Sotheby's especially, well, they're the two giants, the duopoly, although they're giant Chinese auction houses now. <clears throat> but they have changed their business plan. They're no longer auction houses. They are art market enterprises. What does the gallery do when an artist um, whose work would, let's just say, was in the, you know, I don't know, $20,000, $30,000 level, whatever level, and then suddenly a work shows up at auction and makes five times that. How does the dealer approach that? Because then everyone who owns one of those works believes their work is worth that much money.